Hey, what's up? What's up, everyone? Thanks for being here with me today. We're going to be talking about three of my favorite plugins that I use for voiceover. This is what we're going to be getting into on today. I want to welcome everyone into the podcast on today. Um, let me just go over here and check out the comments that are coming in. What's going on, Ben? Glad to have you. And yep, I'm the first one in. Hey, Earl, what's going on, Ben? Glad to have you here. Already asking me questions. Can I use a plugin with Audacity? Yes, you can. Actually, on this channel, um, if you search, I do have how to install plugins um, using Audacity. It's a few years old, uh, but still very relevant. So you can just look for that on the channel. Just put that in search. Um, how to install plugins in Audacity, and you will find it uh, right here. So, yes, you definitely can. One of the things that um, we all know too well and good is that processing our audio is is one of the toughest things to to learn how to do. I mean, there's plenty of things that we have to learn how to do, uh, but processing audio is just one of them. Uh, I don't think there's such a thing. Um, with which actually I was going to say, I don't think there's such a thing with just using raw audio, but uh, you know, from like your, especially if you have what I have, like a snap studio, you can probably um, be able to pull that off, but there's going to be some sort of plugins nine times out of 10 that you're going to want to use to enhance your voice. I, I think it's just inherent with what it is that we do. Uh, because we want to be putting our best foot forward. And you are more than welcome, Ben. More than welcome. Glad you asked the question. Because if you had the question, plenty of other people had the question as well. So let's get into some of this. Because traditionally, um, you know, especially years ago, going back maybe about a decade or so, um, getting into audio production wasn't as as prevalent as it is now. It, now it's become more of a requirement that we actually know how to process the audio that we're actually putting out and giving to clients. Um, long gone are the days where, well, not long gone, but it's not as prevalent anymore or needed as much anymore. We used to have to go into a studio to record our voice. Like we'd have to pay someone to go into their studio or we get hired from an agency and that agency would send us into a studio. They would pay that studio to do the recording, so on and so forth. But now it is one of those things where you need to become, for lack of a better term, a one-stop shop for, for your clients uh, so that they can come to you. They can get the voiceover. They can get really good audio. You can, you know, you know how to put in the background music, sound effects, all of that. It has become really required for VOs, voiceover artists, to actually understand how to do that. And the level of education that we have available to us on our DAWs, our DAWs, our digital audio workstations, uh, the software that we use to record our voice, that, you know, it has become required that we understand how to do that. But the level of education is so much higher now because you have so many people that have that understanding, like myself and so many others, um, that can actually show you and teach you how to do those things that you need to do in order to process your audio. So back in the day, I remember first getting into voiceover and, you know, I wanted to go in and understand, which I believe you all should. The, there, there are three or four things I believe you need to know. You need to understand how to um, remove your noise, any background noise that you have. I'm not talking. Now, let me let me qualify this because I think this needs qualification. When I'm talking about removing background noise, I am not talking about removing noise based on you not being in a proper recording environment. That is not what I'm talking about. If you are recording in an open space, it's very airy, you're surrounded by, you know, just your walls, your hard flat surfaces that, you know, that's the thing that allows your voice to bounce off of those things back into your microphone and give you that awful sound. We're not talking about taking out that background noise at all. What we're talking about is if you're in a, a recording space, like, you know, a whisper room, a snap studio, like I have, you have a walk-in closet, whatever it is that you're using, right? 
to enable you to be in a recording space that does not allow those things to happen, right? When you're in there, and let me just give you some numbers to shoot for. Um, if you don't understand a term like noise floor, it is what shows up on your meters when you're not speaking. Like if you just hit record and you just let it play, you know, record for 10 seconds, you would hear and see what your noise floor is. You want to be hitting a noise floor, you know, below negative, negative 30. You want to be hitting a noise floor there. Because we're talking way above negative 30, but I know like in my own in my own snap studio now, I have a noise floor of negative 54, which is amazing to have. Right? It's amazing to have a noise floor that low. And what that noise floor enables you to do is you're only really capturing your voice as you speak. That's what you want to capture in a very true sense in, in a place that is not allowing you to have bad audio or capture bad audio. So when I'm talking about removing noise, I'm talking about the minimal. I mean, just minuscule amounts of noise, right? And so that's one thing. You want to learn how to remove noise or have noise reduction without interfering with your voice so that it doesn't affect the quality of your voice because you can try and do noise reduction. And if you're in a horrible space, it's going to degrade the quality of your voice. You're going to be able to hear it. And everyone's going to be able to hear it. And it's not going to be a good thing, right? So removing noise. I'll throw in there removing your breaths. Um, if you listen, if you didn't know before, but if you go back and you listen now to like a commercial on TV or, or radio or an ad you see on the internet or something like that, you're going to notice that you don't hear breathing. You don't hear this sound. You're not hearing that inhale. That's and so you want to be able to remove that that those breaths out of your audio as well. So we've got noise reduction, removing breaths. You have to learn compression. You have to learn about what compression is and how it works. And there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. And that's one of the things that happens a lot of times with brand new voiceover artists or audio engineers or whatever. They have a tendency to overprocess, which is not needed. So we've got remove noise, we've got remove breaths, we've got compression, you've got EQ, equalization, how to turn down the, the lows or turn up the highs or turn up the mids, all those things in between to make a good quality sound of your voice, right? And then even after EQ, there is such a thing as a de-esser, de meaning those semblance sounds, those s -s -s, the semblance sounds that can be very distracting if they're too in your face, understanding those things. What I'm going to cover with you today, because you guys asked me to show you my favorite plugins, I'm going to show you how I do my compression, my EQ, all in one swoop. I'm going to show you how I do my, my breaths as far as deep breaths, and I'm going to show you how I take out my noise. And what I'll first show you here, and let me just share the screen with you. Um, we'll go here. And we're going to go here. This is the first thing that I'm going to show you here, which is basically called a Snap Studio. Um, this is what I've been using uh, for about the past three weeks to do my voiceovers with. Um, I was using my wife's walk-in closet. Now we're using the Snap Studio. It gives you that good, clean sound that you're going to need because now you're actually in a treated space. You're in a space that is conducive to recording in. And it will settle so many problems on the front end that you don't have to worry about them on the back end. One of them being noise reduction. One of them being first of all, recording in a proper environment in order to record. So there's going to be links and descriptions for all of these things that I'm telling you about here on today as well. But you can go ahead and check that out. Link is in the description. I even made a full video on this uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you can just look at my YouTube channel and see that. Um, is Snap Studio all it's cracked up to be or whatever? Something funny like that, that um, I put in that description. So now, Let's go and take a look at the very first thing that I talked about 
whoops, let me take this off. All right, took that off. The very first thing that I talked about was your noise reduction, taking noise out of what it is that you're doing. And that thing is all about this little plugin here, which I absolutely loved. It's called NS1. You see this big slider right here, right? There's a huge slider. You literally can just move the slider and hear how the noise gets taken out of your audio. You can literally hear it in motion and you can tune it in exactly the way you want. Now, this and the rest of the plugins that I'm going to show you today, you actually get 10% off by using my affiliate link for Waves. You go, you grab this, you, you use my link in the description, you're actually going to literally get 10% off. Let's take a, let's see what this is talking about here with NS1. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily remove background noises with one simple movement within Premiere Pro using this incredibly simple to use plugin called the NS1 by Waves Audio. I'll show you how to do it in Adobe Premiere, but you can use NS1 in other video or audio editing software too. You'll find the complete list on waves.com slash NS1. So let's get to it. This is a promotional video for a yoga teacher training course. Here's a little piece of it with just the raw sound recorded with a lavalier mic. Namaste. My name is Aryan Ved. I'm from Central India. I've been practicing yoga for 20 years now, and I've been teaching yoga for 12 years. And I would like to invite you to my yoga teacher training course. As a rule of thumb, when working with synced audio recorded on set, the first thing you want to do is to get rid of any unwanted noises before EQing, compressing, or any other manipulation to balance and improve the sound. Yes. Now, as you can hear, it's pretty well recorded. You can clearly hear his voice and understand what he's saying. Having said that, there are some background noises. The room is echoing a bit. You can hear the air conditioning working. It's not ideal. And there are a lot of things you can do to make it sound better. I'm going to pull up the NS1 plugin and show you how quick and easy it is to get rid of these problems. Namaste. My name is Aryan Bhatt. I'm from Central India. You're disappearing. I've been practicing yoga for 20 years now, and I've been teaching yoga for 12 years. And I would like to invite you to my yoga teacher training course. It already sounds much better. Now, you don't want to go too extreme, or you'll get a kind of gated pumping sound and lose the natural feel of it. Let's hear that again, with and without the plugin. Namaste. My name is Aryan Ved. I'm from Central India. I've been practicing yoga for 20 years now, and I've been teaching yoga for 12 years. And I would like to invite you to my yoga teacher training course. Namaste. My name is Aryan Ved. I'm from Central India. I've been practicing. Okay, now what it is that you should have been able to see within this little clip from NS1, this was in one of those spaces that I was talking about. It was completely open, airy, and you heard all of that background noise in it. Now, being a voiceover artist or anyone in audio production, you ought to be using your headphones. Um, you hear a lot better with your headphones on as opposed to listening to something as trife as your computer speakers, which don't work. Um Having external speakers help, but headphones are the best for doing editing with. Now, so you heard what it sounded like before he started moving the slider on an S1. And then you heard what it sounded like beyond that. Now, just imagine you're going to be hopefully recording in a much better space, not something that's so airy and, and all of that, you know, echoey, basically, I should say. You're going to be recording in a much better space than that. And so what's going to happen with that using NS1, your audio is going to sound amazing just from the standpoint of being able to take out that background noise. I, I think that is a big, a big and a huge game changer to be able to do that. So again, this and the rest of the plugins that I'm going to be sharing with you today are all, you know, you can get 10% off of them through Waves through using my affiliate link, which is literally in the description. Go ahead and use that. And because the, the the noise reduction process, whether we're talking about Audacity, whether we're talking about Adobe Audition, whether we're talking about GarageBand, all of those have similar noise reduction, but it's clunky. And it takes a whole lot more than just moving a slider to really key in on that noise that you want to take out. 
NS1 makes it the easiest that I've seen. There, there, I'm sure there may be others, but NS1, we've been talking about in, in the voiceover community for years now. Um, when it came out, it was like, wow, this is amazing because I'm going to be able to do so much more a lot quicker and a lot more precisely using this plugin, which does work whether you're using Audacity or whether you're using Adobe Audition. It pretty much works, I believe, in all of the, the DAWs, the digital audio workstations. I believe it works in pretty much all of them. Um, so you can definitely check that out. Now, one of the other cool things, now this one here, when I found this one about seven years ago from Waves, and I'm going to pull this up here, it, it's called Deep Breath is what it's called. And it changed the game on me in, in so many different ways. Um, I'm wondering why I can't find it here. Nope, it's not that one. It's not that one. There it is. All right. So, yeah, now I can show this. This is the deep breath from Waves. What this does, it actually analyzes, once you've done re you're done recording your audio, what it does, it allows you to literally see each breath that this plugin is going to take out. And it allows you to adjust it in such a way that it only captures the breaths that you want to take out. So let's let's take let's take a quick look at this video. Deep Breath uses a unique process that automatically detects and separates a vocal take into two distinct tracks, only voice and only breath. Now, you can control how much breath you want on your vocal track and how you want it processed. You can even add room tone where breaths have been removed or reduced. And Deep Breath isn't just for singers. It's also a great time saver for voiceovers and multimedia. Yes. Let's have a listen. Got my head right for the first time. Now it's perfectly clear. See, it shows the breaths. Got my head right for the first time. Now it's perfectly clear. You were lying, sick of crying. Hate the pain, hate the tears. Now, as as cool as this is, you, you're you should be noticing something here. The white spaces, the the stripes down the from top to bottom, that's detecting the breaths, and it's automatically taking those things out. The AI on this is phenomenal, that it can actually detect a breath, and you can actually control it with the little sliders on the left side, as far as the sensitivity goes, and what it is that it's grabbing. Many times, right out of the box, it works. Sometimes there may be a need, depending on your recording environment, your recording levels, all of that, to make a little adjustment with the sliders on the left. But that's it. And it's going to detect the breaths in there. And it's going to enable you, once you hit apply, it's going to remove those breaths. This was a game changer, even as far as dealing with with audiobooks, because you can't you don't want breaths in audiobooks, right? Um, you don't want breaths in commercials. Now, here's the thing: after using this plugin for as long as I've been using it, one of the major things that you want to make sure that you do, I wouldn't, I would highlight maybe about no more than three to five minutes of an audio, right? Um, to detect the breaths in because I think it may start to get confused. I even might go down to as far as like a minute to two minutes, just select that portion, work it, go do the next portion, work it. I've noticed that if I try to do a very long piece, it gets confused and messed up. But if I stick to very short clips, like under three minutes, it's normally good. And for me, what is funny is when I said it works right out of the gate in my old setup in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right? It literally worked right. Out. I didn't have to do anything. It worked right out of the gate here. I have to do a, a minor adjustment on the top slider in order to make sure that it's right. But the thing is you can listen to it actually before you apply it. So it allows you to hear what it's going to do. And then if you hit the apply button in the bottom left or bottom right, then it does go ahead and take out what it is that you've instructed it to take out just phenomenal way of doing things. And now when I talked earlier about 
having to deal with your, your compression and your EQ, things of that nature, right? It's one of those things where I believe you ought to know how to do that on your own. I, I believe you definitely need to learn each individual piece, whether we're talking about compression or whether we're talking about EQ. I do believe that you need to understand how these things work and actually what sounds good so that in your end result with the plugin that I'm about to show you from Waves will allow you to, to know that it's spot on and that it's right. And it's this plugin called CLA Vocals. This plugin, I'm, I'm going to walk through these different sliders here. <clears throat> Basically for me, the only three sliders that I deal with are the one, well, let's start from the left. You got the left, the input, so you can control how much, let's just call it volume, goes in to the whole thing. Then moving to the right, we have bass is that second slider. The third slider is treble. The fourth slider is, co is compression. I don't deal with the other, with the uh, reverb, delay, or pitch. I don't deal with that. I turn them off. I do deal with the output if I want to increase the gain of the output some, right? Um, but this is going to give you a lot of gain anyway because it's dealing with your bass treble and compression. So now what you want to do is take a listen and you can just move the bass. If, if, if you're using a microphone that captures a lot of your bass, right? Kind of like a, um, even like this Shure SM7B that I'm using captures a lot of bass and, uh, like a TLM 103 captures a lot of bass. Um, you can fix that right here by turning the bass down, right? Maybe if you're, if you've got a higher pitch voice or you're female, you can go ahead and turn that bass probably maybe a little bit more up, but then the treble part for me, my treble is all usually about halfway up this slider. And then the compression is about a quarter of the way up. And then it gives me the sound that I know that I want so that I don't have to go in because I record flat. My audio coming into my DAW is flat. So I know I don't need a lot or I don't want a lot. I just want enough, right? And you'll figure out what that enough is. It's kind of an art thing, right? But let's take a listen to a little bit of this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get any style of vocal sitting perfectly in any genre of music using a powerful all-in-one vocal mixing plugin. Made in close collaboration with one of the world's best known mix engineers, Chris Lord Algae, CLA Vocals takes lifeless sounding dry vocal tracks. We see the colors and with six easy to use faders, instantly adds polish to get vocals sounding upfront and purposeful. With CLA vocals, you have everything you need to get any style of vocal fast, from beautifully delicate moods to upfront edgy rock sounds and everything in between. Now, obviously, this is dealing more heavily with music, but you can hear the difference in what it sounded like um, just in the vocals, this music vocals that it, that it did, right? And you can just really tune this up and heighten it up to a place where your audio just sounds pristine. It, lit it sounds so good, um, you won't even believe it. But this is going to always track back. And I'm going to say this over, this will always track back to what you put in is going to be most important, how you put that in. And what I'm talking about is your recording environment. I've said this for years, almost a decade at this point. I don't care how good of a microphone you buy. I don't care how good you are at audio production. Don't care what kind of DAW you're using. If your recording environment is not appropriate, it's not going to help down the line. You need to start with an appropriate recording environment so that you don't have to worry about fixing stuff because what you allowed into your microphone was junk. This is where you want to get this thing right. Now, um, if you have any questions, feel free. We've talked about on today um, the Waves plugins that you can get. And by the way, there's you know link in the description. You can get 10% off of any plugins that you buy from Waves. I talked about Deep Breath Vocal. You know, I, I, the deep, the deep breath vocal plugin from Waves. We just saw the CLA vocal plugin from 
waves. And then also we saw the phenomenal NS1 plugin for noise reduction on waves. Um, so definitely check out what's there. When it comes down to audio production, um, hey, thanks, Nate. Glad to have you in here with us. Yes, absolutely true. The um, recording environment is king. This stuff can become very complicated. But there's one thing that I, I firmly believe, and, and I'll go back to what I said before. I believe you need to get in and dig into learning all the different tools in regards to what's in your JW. You need to understand compression. You need to understand EQ. You need to understand noise reduction. Um, you need to understand the DS process as well. But these additional plugins come in, I think, very handy for people that understand the process. I don't think these, I don't think these plugins, in, in my opinion, this is just my opinion. I don't believe that someone that just gets the plugins but does not know the process of how compression and EQ and all that stuff works, I don't believe you're as good at using the plugins to accomplish the task. Um, my background is in engineering and um, in particular, uh, basically um, computer-aided drafting and design uh, for mechanical engineering. And I came into the mix um, right around 1996 uh, is when I got started in my very first profession with that. And in um, college, we learned how to use the drafting board, right? Because that's what you had to use before all this computer dra computer aided drafting and design stuff came on the came on the scene. So you had to learn how to use a T-square and, and, you know, all the different tools and a compass. And, and you had to learn how to draw with your hand and with tools to make a drawing that you could give to someone to build something with. Then when computer-aided dra computer drafting and design came on and now everything was on the computer. So now we're going into around 1997. Um, the thing that everyone saw is that the people that knew how to draw were way better than the people that were just learning on the computer. Now, of course, we don't teach drawing anymore. It's all just computer aided drafting and design. But it would still hold true for someone my age in their 50s that would probably be able, if I'd stuck with it anyway, be a whole lot better than someone that was just starting using the computer because I can visualize more than what that person can. Same concept here, even though it's all digital, you know, we're not, but it's kind of funny. I think maybe if you, if, if we extrapolate this all the way back it would be to people like cutting tape. Like I have no idea how they did that and put commercials together. I have no clue, but they used to do it. But when you understand the basic principles of how these things operate and work, it allows you to use the, if you want to call them, the shortcut tools a whole lot better than someone that doesn't know that intricate stuff that, that's involved with how to set up compression appropriately in your DAW. Um, Nate is saying, I use CLA oh, all the time, um, CLA vocals. I made a preset. Yep, I did. you got to make your presets, call EVO and use it. And receive jobs from it. Thanks, Earl. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the CLA vocals one was a game changer for me. It really was. I found that about six years ago. And it changed the game for me. Made my workflow a lot better. And it is a part of my rack. Um, my audio production rack inside of Adobe Audition. You know, with that. Um, look, I want to thank you guys for being here with me today. Make sure that you do check out... Uh, the links in the description. Go ahead and grab your 10% off of any of your Waves plugins that you want, courtesy of Earl Hall Studio, by using our uh, affiliate link that's in the description of this video. I'm here with you for this podcast every Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I want to make sure that you're here. There is a poll out right now um, that I put out every week asking you what you want to know about. There's a poll right now on the community tab of my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Earl Hall Studio. Make sure you go there and vote. And um, 
We'll be talking about that on next week. And thank you so much, Vanessa. Started listening to you on my computer. Hello. You are talking about the 70s cutting tape for creating commercials. That's how it was. Yes. I do not have any clue how they did it. No clue at all what that involves. Uh, but those those guys and gals were masters at what it is that they were doing. And I'm sure that if they're still in the game, they're amazing at audio production as well. You guys have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. You take care.